hi this is going to be my sort of analysis video to the song path to isolation or mirror mirror part 0.5 slash a half or why is this sad sad song <laughs> give our girl a hug please oh wow i was getting angsty about yang earlier now i'm going to be angsty about this girl as well Let's go. Let's just bring on the feels, you know? With the unexpected loss of something dear. So that could be a mum as she descended into alcoholism because of the abuse. Her mum thinks like she would be more of a comforting and cradling force in winter. Twice his personality, that one. Oof. They're, they're, start, they're starting with the angst. They're not going to build up to the angst. It's like, yep, here we go. Weiss is, yeah. So I said, like, that, that sort of warm, comforting presence, uh, that's probably her mum uh i don't think that'd be so much winter i mean winter did leave to go to the military but she winter seems more like stability or something like she would whatever happened at least winter was there and winter could try and help her become stronger so one day they could both protect themselves and escape jack's Jucks. Weiss is horrible, horrible father. <laughs> His influence. So it could it could also reflect that. I'm not saying because Winter was in the flashback that this song doesn't relate to her massive part in Weiss's life at all. I think because as I said uh, in other analysis videos, um, some of these songs are memories so what the character is currently thinking about can make their way into moments which otherwise wouldn't if like they were happening you wouldn't be thinking about the future that's what i'm trying to say take a shot every time i say it's a memory uh, okay then but yeah it's like as love began to leave Weiss's life her hope she became more hopeless and well then she starts to feel empty like Weiss yeah Weiss went through depression I don't think that's news to all of us but like a hole inside of her yep yeah, that is that's depression that's not just angst but there is something, there is a tiny little beacon of hope, a light, if you will. Because there's a part of her that's giving up, but there is a part of her which seems to be acting out. Because with all this talk of hopelessness and about darkness and emptiness and the dreams that lay destroyed, that's rough. Bitterness and anger are quick to fill the void. Like, it's not good to be a bitter and angry person. But every characteristic I think that someone has, personally, whether a positive one or a negative one, can be used in a positive or a negative way. And even though Weiss potentially pushed people away with those in Volume 1, the main example, when she had this bit of queen bee vibe going on um 
she's defiant and like that obviously being able to just be like well I don't care what that person thinks I'm gonna try and do what I can obviously she did have to care what he thinks what her father thought because he was her abuser and she was in danger but uh, you could see the you could see like her start to rebel I guess like just this little seed being planted to grow even if they're a little twisted so part of her that's giving up part of her which isn't which also works with the whole mirror mirror thing she always says how she's split into two pe two things like a mind and a heart and like the mirror and her and stuff like that so it gets to the conflict conflict which is inside of her which carries on and we get these nice drums another inventive use of drums they haven't been this wild since red light roses i don't think Jaded, reflects you earlier, about the bitterness and anger. Sorry to interrupt you there. But yeah, that's definitely said about conflict. The drums, they're very wild, sort of. They make me think of the character trailer, where it is sort of, there's a sort of storm, a faux storm, fake storm, because of winter using a semblance to train Weiss but it works with Weiss's mindset there's a lot of conflict and turmoil with her helplessness she's not laying down and and giving up though like we wouldn't blame her obviously that wouldn't be her fault but she can't there's all this stuff whirling inside of her brain all at once and all these horrible thoughts and feelings and all the stuff that's happening to her and I think that reflects in the music. And I just thought I'd point it out. It was, it was new. Uh, they don't do that with all of their songs and it reminded me of Red Light Roses which was interesting. The songs are quite different. There's a little bit of angst. Not quite the same scale, but it was interesting. And, sorry, I put someone help Weiss please in my notes with three exclamation marks. Yeah, there's a lot of um, cold as sort of bad. I haven't, admittedly, I haven't done... I haven't done as much research as I could. I haven't gone through all of the Weiss song lyrics. I thought that this would probably be long enough without <laughs> me going into past songs as well who knows maybe in the future i'll do that weiss's growth through the songs of the ruby soundtrack but not right now but cold is bad here you know it's like a lot of the time when you, if anyone like anyone watching has experienced depression sometimes you can feel quite cold and empty and like how do i explain this like you know in harry potter there's the dementors and they have that like if they make everything cold and they make all the horrible stuff start ha like all the horrible memories come to the surface while the good ones get slowly pulled and pulled away and stuff like that and all the like the happiness goes away and stuff like it's that sort of this like cold is generally associated with that sort of feeling and warmth with night with pleasurable feelings and happiness um it could be it could all be to do with that but it's interesting language because obviously it it fits with weiss's theme she's snow white she's got this whole ice thing but like you know is she is she, has she learned to associate all of that with negativity I don't know if I'm just going a bit too far. Maybe they just wanted to stick with Weiss, Weiss's themes. It's like, well, her element, ice. So we need to. What do we need to include in the song? Ice. It's not, it's not necessarily she thinks her heritage is inherently 
bad or anything but it could it could be that which is sad because like she's never she's never going to be able to not be wife snee and not be related to the snee family and all the terrible things that certain members have done so if like for her to associate all of that with something negative would well it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the best coping mechanism this would probably be if she is thinking like that that's probably before that i'm gonna reclaim my family name and do good things in the schnee name and stuff like that it probably would be before she came to that sort of realization so it's interesting there's also some stuff here which fits in with certain head cannons that a lot of us in the fandom have i just uh, I personally, I know like Grease the Teeth aren't going to do this at all, but, well, who knows, but I think it's unlikely that they're going to make Weiss a lesbian, or gay, whatever sexuality, but Weiss has always felt LGBT to me, she's got these certain themes, like, I won't go into it now, Maybe I'll do a separate video for that if if anyone like says why do you think Weiss is gay or something but Neptune whatever I'm not I'm not trying to make fun of anyone I'm sorry but yeah just like this stuff about being confused and forced to conform and like there's stuff later on as well um, like stuff about right near the end she like looks at her reflection and then she's just sort of like who am i and like you know having to figure out who you are not being allowed to be who you are that's a bit yeah that's like that could you know if someone sees wife's as gay or trans like or both um I can definitely see a hundred percent why someone would see that. In fact I do see why this has been those things. So I just thought I'd mention it. If you don't head canon that or like just feel free to ignore that because that's not obviously it's not canon unless the Brewster Teeth say that later on, but I just thought that that was nice. Okay, so Weiss feels alone, you get that a bit at the beginning, but then it's just like sort of uh, goes into why a bit more, like the first bit, people around Weiss have manipulated her, let's be real, some trying to control her, like Jux, that's not a name you should say with this kind of voice, Jux, Jax. Oh no, evil Lorax. <laughs> but anyway, like she's tried to, people have tried to control her, like a certain horrible person, and other people obviously are trying to uh, manipulate her. You get the sense of that at the the gala thing that was in volume four. You know when she has that outburst, and then Ironwood's like, yeah. Uh, you lot are crazy, don't, you know, say, call Weiss that. Um, you know, like, some people just care about her for her name and not her herself and her, inf and like, just want her influence. Um, I just thought that would, there's also Whitley. 
don't know if I should swear in this video, but I've definitely put that name in my notes if you know what name I mean. But you also get that with Whitley as well, how he sort of did his horrible, in like sort of manipulating thing in volume four. Like instead of being there for his sister or something like that, you get the sense that he he's like his father and wants to follow in his footsteps. Which, yeah. So she can't so she can't trust anyone at this time of her life apart from like winter her mum can't do anything so mainly just winter so you get why in like the first volume at the very least and a bit later on she's hesitant to get close to some anyone because she's just like well you're just going to use me and you sort of get you know when she was like oh Oh, I'll be Pyrrha's partner and because she's so strong and like famous for being strong so if we work together we'll be blah, blah, blah. like people thought of her in similar ways so she had got a little bit of that sort of toxic thing inside her brain where she's like well everyone just manipulates each other so why would I get close to someone when they're just going to turn around and hurt me and you can see later on in the show, like volume five mainly, um, her, her, she's started to unlearn that. Like when she sees Yang again, she just hugs her. She's not afraid of displaying affection. She's like, no, I missed you, Yang. I did. And I'm proud of her for that. Obviously, there are examples before when she trusted Pilot Boy. Rest in peace. And... Um, she tried to, like, when Raven was, before Raven just stamped on her face, uh, <laughs> she was like, please help. So she, you know, didn't immediately think, oh, well, this person's going to kidnap me, help me for rans ransom, or do some other horrible thing. She thought there was a chance that they might want to help her. So, obviously, mixed bag, as comes with any change in someone's life. But... Yeah, she, you can see why she deliberately put everyone at arm's length and why she was perhaps even deliberately ruder than she was naturally trying to be, you know? Like, she could have thought, well, Ruby's immature and a bit naive, but she does have some good ideas, but then a part of her was like, well, she's going to get us into trouble or something like that. Like, you've trained for so long and now you don't even get to be in charge. And so, you know, she could have pushed people away more than she wanted to deep down. Which is just character growth. I, I'm proud of... I'm proud of our little snow angel. And then, you get some more angst! <laughs> I laugh, I'm not... I'm sad on the inside, but you know when you just have to laugh, because otherwise you're just like, mm, yeah. But, like, everything is breaking right before my eyes. She's falling apart. Yeah. And looking in the mirror, I see someone I don't recognise. So, there we go. Mirror, mirror. There's another, there's a reference to... Well, most of Weiss's songs mention the mirror in some aspect. Even uh, Life is Mine does when she shatters it. But obviously this is the, this is the first one. Um, so this is her, like her first direct mention of the mirror in canon, sort of, depending on your views on timelines. Um, but looking in the mirror, I see someone I don't recognise. Because obviously there's the wife that she has to be in order to survive living in a Snee household with a abuser who's incredibly rich and she can't escape. So she has to pretend in order to survive. But that's not her. She doesn't know who she is, but she knows that she doesn't want to pretend and that she is pretending and that this isn't right. It also 
there's a whole theme of wanting to be who she is but not even really knowing who she is because she's been pretending to be someone else for so long throughout the song and that definitely starts to drive that home up there quickly yep more suffering wow they don't let you up for a second in this song um yeah so it's like what i said earlier about the sort of um positive memories and thoughts about the world sort of um i don't want to say draining away but like it's just her mindset just becoming so focused on negative things that it's like, well, even joy itself is um, leaving as well. It's like eluding her that she can't find it anymore. And she's alone and smiles faded. Like, that is a... Uh, I said in my uh, smile analysis that there are certain Weiss and Ilya parallels and I do definitely see it again going back through this song. You know, because obviously Ilya had to hide and conform in Atlas. And um, she even mentioned something like acting like a princess in the realm of selfish men or something. Really good line. And... Um, Obviously, Ilya had to question her identity in the in like the white fangs. Like, is this who she is? No, she doesn't actually want to hurt people. She she knows that this is actually wrong. When seeing things from another side, and I just think that the whole parallels between Weiss and Ilya thing is thematically quite interesting because they grew up in completely different places but they are quite similar in some ways in fact Ilya became sort of bitter and jaded to quote the song uh, herself so I think that's interesting I do hope that we could get some nice Weiss Ilya interaction later on, but let's just let's just move on. But my point is that Weiss seems to be regressing. Like she's not just I am depressed. It's like the more time she stays in this toxic place, the worse she gets. Which is why she desperately had to leave. And Huntress Academy is a great way to leave and become strong. As well as trying to do good things. Like, it's like a checklist of reasons that I saw. And she's like, I can do this. And she did everything she could to do so. And she succeeded. And I'm proud of her. positive memories leaving her. Her neg all the negative parts of 
just existence I suppose are just becoming more and more evident to her as all the positive stuff leaves her and yeah there's also um scar is it scars that uh, cover wounds can't hide the self inflicted pain in it on this lyric so I apologize it that's what I'm looking at it says skies but I think it might be scars um that led to a, obviously a brief panic <laughs> in the fandom where everyone was like wait does why does why like does why self harm does she cut herself she has a long sleeves all the time it's um everyone freaked out and rightly so obviously because i it's my head canon that Weiss did self harm did being the key word um i just I haven't seen a lot of um characters in the media i consume that you know experience mental health issues and severe mental health issues and get better and become better people you know so like i think if weiss was um depressed and had some form of some forms of anxiety left from being in an abusive household and she self-harmed but then she started to like when she got in a um a safe non-toxic environment with people who genuinely cared about her she could start to unpack those things and start to recover and she did recover she got she went through a lot of character development and i just even if that headcanon was sort of like disproved or denied by um casey the casey cassie casey the singer um i, I haven't watched that video i've just heard some things apparently she denied that even if that is like not officially canon i'm just Obviously, everyone can headcanon what they want, and I just thought I I could take a minute to just explain that. You know, I see a lot of Weiss uh, having, like, eating disorder headcanons and stuff like that. And it just... I think that it works with the character, and it's sort of like, if Rooster Teeth had gone in that direction it would have been um well if they'd managed to fit it in there was a lot going in the last couple of volumes if they'd managed to fit it in then that would have been quite uplifting because even though it's a horrible horrible subject self-harm that to see someone be able to stop and be able to quit and be able to recover and then although like one day they look at the cuts or how, whatever method they used and then their scars or like those bruises aren't visible anymore or something like that and to just know that they're getting better it's quite uplifting I suppose for the people that experience that but anyway I just thought I'd point that out obviously it's not canon so like <laughs> yeah but <laughs> it, people can head canon whatever they want really so, but interestingly enough, or not horribly enough, I suppose, um, everything my mind wants in conflict with my heart. So you've got the mind and heart thing again. You get that um, mentioned in other songs, I believe at least one, and some stuff like Can a Heart Turn Into Stone? I can't remember what song that is. I try. I I don't listen to angsty like sad songs as much. I listen to the angry songs, but this is like so. This is like it being mentioned first. So you have that duality again of Weiss not being one complete person. Her feeling shattered, to use mirror language, or broken or in pieces she's falling apart and she can't put herself back together and she doesn't even know how she would fit back together like what does she what does her mind want and what does her heart want 
like they should surely be the same thing to obviously to escape and live a happy life and for the Shnee name to not be a name linked to someone who wants to control and hurt people but instead just be I don't know a company I guess just a norm just a business or just a family or something just not toxic so the fact that her mind and heart want different things is concerning maybe she at that time in her life when she started to give up as she said biting back surrender but every day I'm falling more apart maybe a part of her genuinely believed that she would just die in that house that she would never get out which is that is mm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting a bit I'm getting a bit emo about this. Um, so I don't know if she even realised what that implies about her and about her state of mind. And I'm glad that she never had to figure out what that means. I'm glad she got out before she even had to consider where her story ended. Oh boy. In my head every time that song ends I always hear that little winter at the end just her little shout and um, yeah I kind of miss it but it's fine it's fine this is already this song already has a lot going in it but um, obviously this brings this little bit at the end brings it all full circle you've got a mirror reference um, you've got I don't know who my reflection is obviously that's a theme that and the mirror sort of go together in all the songs and um strange to my heart she's mentioned her heart again and the mirror and obviously it's rock it's rock again because um the mirror 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 part two and all of that are generally sort of slower songs and not as rocky compared to the rest of them that's probably why i haven't listened to them as much and um like then you go all the way through the years to this life is mine which is quiet at the beginning and then it gets like loud and it becomes a bit of a an anthem i suppose like if i'm walking up if i'm gonna walk up a hill then like what what song am i gonna play i'm gonna play this life is mine i'm gonna get up that hill you know got the guitar going got the drums so it goes to goes to rock again. So this the first song is rock ends on rock, and well it's kind of rock all the way through, but especially this sort of bit. So it's full circle because this life is my ends on rock. So it brings it all back, ties it off with a neat little bow, with no cat ears, just a bow. But it's yeah. So it just reinforces like everything that the song is about, just like a little reminder, you know, like a conclusion in an essay, because there's the Snow White thing, there's not knowing who she is, and there's being concerned about what, well, concerned is an understatement, about um, what she is and her life and what she's become. So it just summarises all of that. And it's, yeah, it's, it definitely just sort of, um, it packs a punch, this song. I think if I listen to it casually, I'm like, I'm having a good time. But if I just let myself think about the lyrics for a moment, I have to sort of 
Ooh. <laughs> but it just shows how much Weiss has grown. And now she's she's been in a loving, supporting environment with the team at Beacon. And despite all this horrible stuff that's been happening in the volumes, she's grown with love and support. And I just think it's it's a really powerful arc. Probably one of the most powerful arcs in the Ruby series. Uh, it just shows like how other people and oh sorry, I dropped my dropped my fidget key. It just shows how your choices and um, the sort of environment you're in with other people both factor in to your development and your growth and who you are. And it's the choices you make and the how people respond to you mixed together. I think I can't I can't imagine that you know if you just removed one of those aspects that she would be the same person like if you removed her choices and she wasn't defiance anymore would she be wise but if she was still in the snee household and she hadn't met any of team ruby and she was still trying to rebel would she be the same person so i just think that all these things have come together and made the wife that we all know and love and it's it's encouraging, it's quite powerful. And there are parallels to other characters, Ilya, and it's just, I like how good people can become better people and your mistakes don't go away, but you can forgive yourself for them and move forward. I like that message in Ruby. I don't think we get an accurate portrayal of that very often so that's that's nice because Weiss did have her flaws she wasn't evil or anything she's not like offing people like Cinder but she when you look back at volume one it's just like oh come on Weiss don't be mean to Ruby she's like an actual puppy you know <laughs> why would you want to be mean to her but and now she's hugging Ruby and making sure she's okay even though she just got impaled and I just she cared about other people so much and now she's letting herself show that and I am pleased to be a Weiss fan and I'm glad she's not dead <laughs> I'm so glad she's not dead I worried for a second so but my point is I rambled I apologize my point is that through all of this turmoil and suffering she could have responded negatively and become a toxic person but instead she rose above it, above it. and I think this song is a great way of showing the difference in Weiss's character like you listen to this and you listen to This Life Is Mine and you tell me that you tell me that, like, she hasn't changed. But, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed my ramblings. I like Weiss a lot, so I went a bit off topic. But, I'm, I'm glad we got this song. It was a good song. It's a sad song. It makes me want to cry a little bit. But, like, it's a good song. <laughs> anyway, have a great day.